This is what it's like to stay at the Renaissance Reno Hotel in Reno, Nevada. In this video, I'm going to show you around the common areas of the hotel, the neighborhood around the hotel, the inside of one of the rooms. This room, a king bedroom, and I'm going to share with you my pros and cons and let you know whether you should consider staying here or not. All right. Let's go. The Renaissance Reno Hotel is located in downtown Reno. It's located right across the Truckee River from the main casino part of downtown Reno in a little more quiet part of downtown, I would say. It is located right next to the National Automobile Museum. But related to this location, half of the rooms actually have views of the Truckee River. There's a restaurant that looks out at the Truckee River. And the other half of the rooms look out at Midtown Reno, which you'll see mine in just a bit. But it's a nice view looking that way too. There are self-parking and valet parking options. The self-parking lot right next to the hotel, lots of parking spots, and free for hotel guests. As you enter into the hotel lobby, sign in the bottom that says it was established in 1954, a really neat 1937 Bewick because it's right across the street from the National Automobile Center. Turns out you get $5 admission at the Automobile Center if you show your ticket. Check-in desk is a little bit of snacks, some bicycles you can check out over here, a little spot you can just kind of hang out out with some uh, power plugs on it over down this way there's like an art museum back here on the ground floor the concierge desk and here we see the elevators with some nice lights on the bottom to tell you that the spa's up there that we'll check out in just a little bit over here we have the shore restaurant the granite street cafe which is the coffee shop and then continuing the whole art theme there's a little den right here that you can kind of hang out with the photos and maybe flop over at this table. Now just beyond the coffee shop for elite Marriott Bonvoy members is the lounge where they have 24 hour snacks. We got some granola bars and chips, some fruit. These are empty because it's going to be for breakfast tomorrow and there's a set of water and drinks available all day. The seating in here pretty small, no windows, uh, but we'll take a look at what this looks like for breakfast in the morning. Oh, and then it turns out that hallway that's the art museum, it's actually more than just a hallway to an art museum. It is an entrance to the bocce ball bar on the ground floor. So big bar that has six bocce ball courts in it. So like bocce ball that's illuminated, a couple arcade games in the back, big bar and even more bocce ball this way. Super neat. The fourth floor is home to the small but nicely appointed fitness center. It does have windows that look out that way, but you can't really see out the bottom. And then just outside the fitness center is the hotel's spa. And then just beyond the spa is the rooftop swimming pool, though the swimming pool is only open in summer, which it was not when I was here. In case you're wondering, May 1st is not considered summer yet. Now that we've seen everything around the hotel, let's check out the inside of one of the rooms. This is up on the sixth floor, and I want you to notice the interesting artwork in the hallways of the guest rooms. Every floor has interesting art like this, but as we come into room 627, first thing, there's this little corner closet right here. Sort of the oddest part of the room. There's not really a door or any light. It's pretty dark, but such it is. Then there's the bright bathroom that we're going to come back to in a moment after we see the rest of the room. But then there's also a note back here to let you know that The Misfits in 1961, starring Clark Gable and Marilyn Monroe, was filmed in this area. All right, so now coming into the room, it's a it's a funky room uh, based on the funkiness of the hotel. There's a fish on the ceiling, of course. Uh, nice king-size bed, kind of some leather accoutrements on the headboard back there. A blue wall, is it the bathroom wall? A little bit of kind of foggy see-through glass. You can't really see through it, but that does look into the bathroom. There's a mini fridge down here. Those are my bottles of water that I brought in. This little bar doubles as the desk in the room, like it's thin over there and it pops out over here. It has a big fancy Bluetooth speaker, some nice power ports to plug into. Uh, there is a little place to put your luggage with a drawer down here. The television is up on the wall right underneath that fish. And looking over here, there is a mirror that just kind of like hangs out, leaning up on the wall. Some bizarrely green footstool. This really modern, funky chase lounge that's blue cloth with brown leather padding. 
a table over here. This is a connecting room, so it does connect to another room. I hope they're quiet tonight. And then my view out this window uh, looks out onto Midtown Reno. Rooms on the other side look out at the Truckee River. Okay, turning back into the room from the window, the air conditioner is oddly placed right here and it's kind of a loud, noisy thing. We'll see how that works tonight. More about that when we get to the pros and cons section of this video. Coming into the bathroom, uh, it is bright in here. This is that uh, glass you can't really see through it this way because it's brighter in here. Big mirror, uh, big sink, toilet, and a shower, no bath. But the shower is nice because it has a fixed head and a removable head so you can actually take that out. Uh, and just use the removable head if you want to. Avida common soaps here on the wall. Now that we've seen around the room, if you watch my hotel reviews regularly, you'll know it's time for the Topher Review, where I'm joined by my traveling panda, Topher. I'm Chris, he's Topher. Together we make Christopher, and we're gonna review this hotel on a scale of one to five Topher. So Topher, how many Tophers is the Renaissance Reno gonna get? It's gonna get four Tophers. All right, so now let's talk about the pros and the cons of why this hotel got four Tophers. Uh, and so first off, nice big room, sharp. Everything in this hotel is well-maintained. Uh, for someone who doesn't really enjoy smoke in casinos, I love that this is a hotel that is entirely smoke-free. You can park close to the hotel, come into your room, not smell a lot of cigarette smoke. Easy to get in, easy to get out. The staff was friendly. I also enjoyed, uh, as a Marriott Elite member, the breakfast in the lounge, uh, and it wasn't just a couple of cheap things. They had a good selection of eggs, meat, and eggs benedict. I had two eggs benedict, some good fruit, so that's pretty good for Marriott Elite members. The Riverfront Restaurant is neat. The Bocce Ball Bar is neat. There's a lot of really neat stuff in this Renaissance Hotel. And the location's good, too. It's right along the Truckee River, close by to the downtown casinos, um, not too far from the airport. I think a great central location for a Reno visit. Cons, what are the cons? Uh, I think probably the biggest con for this hotel is definitely gonna be the price. It seems to be much more expensive than most of the Reno casinos, probably because it doesn't have a casino to draw in more revenue, but like the lowest price I saw this hotel going for has been about $200 a night, and I've seen it going for three, four, even $500 a night, depending upon the dates or the weekends that I stick into Marriott.com. Uh, I personally booked it with Marriott points. It was like 30,000 Marriott points, which was most of a free night certificate from one of my credit cards that I needed to spend that was expiring anyway. So it's a great value on points uh, when the rates are really, really high. The other biggest con for me is the air conditioner in the room. Uh, it's like, this this air conditioner over here on the wall, I don't I don't love that air conditioner. It like while it didn't blow on the bed, had a good night's sleep. Uh, it's noisy, it's loud, and it's definitely the kind of room that is stuffy if the air conditioner is not on because you can't open the windows. It was not so heinous or horrendous that I couldn't sleep or I had to build a pillow fortress or that I wanted to get earplugs. But for a hotel that might be charging four or five hundred dollars a night. I would expect the air conditioner to be a little bit more peaceful. But the question is, would I stay here again? And if I could get a rate in the 200s, I think it's a great base for Reno. Uh, if it had a great points value, I would do that as well. Uh, if it's in the, you know, four, five, six hundred dollars a night, I don't know, I might feel I'm not getting the full value for that rate. All right, fellow explorers, if you enjoyed this video and you wanna see more of our videos, I'll put links here up on the screen or in the descriptions below. And as usual, we won't say goodbye because we're gonna see you in the next video.